Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Play Illusion of Gaia. Now, this is the point we came in right here, so we're going to continue on, and unfortunately, this game wants to be confusing. So, these two doors here, this one and this one, they loop in on themselves. So, just so you know and don't randomly run into the same one over and over again and get lost, this is this one here. And yeah, so they just loop right back in on each other, and you won't have to worry too much, just, you know, don't have to go in each one. This one over here leads to a solitary room, and some more bad guys to kill. And these guys are annoying because of their boomerang things, whatever. More enemies in here, but in a different part of the screen. So yeah, let's... Woo! These guys here are kind of a newish enemy. Well, they are a new enemy. But they, they're not particularly frightening. They will dart their head at you if you... Uh, come back here. They will dart your head at you just like that. And they'll uh, get out of reach because they're annoying. And I jump through the door. Yay! that. You do want to take the right path first, since this leads to a dead end. Come back here. And take out you. Four more enemies in this one. And we'll head back this way. Same room, I guess. And head down here. One. Two. And three. And four. <laughs> there we go. Not exactly how I planned that, but it's better than what I intended on doing. And now we get to the standard Zelda, I mean, Illusion of Gaia dungeon where we have no lights. And enemies. So yeah, there's a nice long line of bats around here. Come back here. Hey, come back here. So let's kill off some bats. Oh man, it's just like uh, being in like the first area of a game. You're fighting bats. At least there's no rats around here. Big evil rats trying to kill me all the time. Ah eh, well. More strength is always appreciated. Let's pick up some more strength. And I don't know why that's the only room in this entire area that has no light on. And here we have what looks to be like more of the village. And a dead end. Now, considering in the past, every time there's been a secret door, you've had to charge up and then attack the wall. This time, you actually have to press the A button right in front of the wall, though I don't know why you wouldn't, why you would do that as opposed to, you know, charging at it like we have at every other turn. And we find a secret passage. Cool! And a new enemy. These guys shoot fireballs at you, so watch out for that, I guess. There we go. Not too much to do in this dungeon. Ow! They do a lot of damage, by the way, when they actually hit you. And we get some defense. No more enemies left in this area. Though we do want to head down here for a red jewel. Now, this is kind of interesting. If you try and leave, because it just looks like a normal door from this end, this side, you, they tell you, they tell you, game, game. I ran right into it that time. What the hell? Thank you. You actually have to uh, slide to get out of there. And should I use a clip? Really? I wasn't thinking about using the clip, but clip? Wind. Yeah, so yeah, it's basically you have to run against the wind here, otherwise you can't do anything. What you want to do here is you want to use your slide ability. Wait until they get to the point where they're right, ready to attack, and then you use your slide ability so that uh, you can go forward, avoid the attack, and hit them all in one go. Which is very much helpful for lack of a better term, because I'm lazy. There we go. 
No! I guess those fireballs are now off screen. Yep, three for one. Gotta love it. Hey, I don't want to use that. There we go. Kill another one of those guys. Hmm, HP. Oh, I probably should have waited on that HP. Oi, come back here. And more defense. And I believe that's the extent of the enemies in this area. I could be wrong, but I think that's all of them. Yep, that's all of them. Slide under here. And what do we have here? Another room with no exit. It's right here. Another secret passage. Yay. Now I believe this is the dead end. Yeah, nothing over there. So we go behind the waterfall. There's no secret area behind the waterfall like there are in, you know, most RPGs, but oh well. Let's check out the first room. Oh, so somebody took a, or painted a picture of Kara. And apparently she's stuck inside of it. How Will knows this, I'll never know. Though they were kind of implying stuff like that back in the village when they said that, uh, you know, after he paints them, they don't come back kind of deal and they disappear. Yeah, they're half, you know, half-assed trying to tell you about it without actually saying it, which I, I guess I can respect. Anyway, make sure you pick up the red jewel there. Nothing else over there. So let's go in this room. And here's the painter. So let's... Oops. Hmm. Go into this room. Okay. I skipped through the dialogue because I was trying to attack him because he's supposed to be the bad guy. Solve all the riddles. No clip this time. No, I'm not going to do that. Give you back the girl. Okay. Hmm. What kind of riddles? Basically, two doors and he won't let you pass until you've checked them out. You have to go in the first door first and get ready for it. Remember where everything is? What color they are? It's another one of these stupid mini games. I hate these things. They're so annoying. It's really not all that bad in this one. I don't actually know what happens if you screw up. I've never done it. You know, the first time I got here, I either figured it out or, you know, I had a friend who already knew where they were. And so I never had a chance at screwing up. But, uh, yeah. Anyway, you want to know what's wrong? You have a little mouse cursor here. Just put on something and, yeah, the jar has changed color. Just press the A button to set it up. And basically, we're going to do this a few more times. Okay. Let's learn this other room. Not too much in this room. Shouldn't be too hard to figure out. Yeah, it's the same thing as the last one. The uh, the pots are a different color. <laughs> They're uh, kind of a little bit lazy with this one. Well, the first two. Now, it's just bullshit. Okay. So, here's a chest containing an herb. Okay, so basically there's two statues and a chest. So, what's the difference? There is no difference in this one. And that's not exactly correct. The idea here is you're supposed to get it wrong or get lucky on a guess and then open the chest, realize that the item in the chest has actually, it's a different chest this time, so it contains a different item, and then, you know, you'll obviously get it on the next one. So yeah, this one contains a red jewel. Nice. This one is another little, this one's actually reasonably tricky. There's not a lot in this room, so, you know, I kept, you know, the first time I saw these, I always kept looking around the sides and, you know, the little intricate details above the, uh, I guess that's supposed to be an angel's head there in the middle. You know, there's little designs on the sides there. I kept looking at those, seeing if they would change. But, no. Yep, 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 yep. If you look around, nothing has changed, but Will's hair is blowing. So yeah, there's wind in this room. That's it. 
I'm assuming that you can't fail this no matter what you do because it's a plot important part and you can't continue the game unless you do this. At least I don't think you can. Whoa. Apparently he painted himself and now he's stuck into a painting as well. I don't know why. Apparently we're supposed to use the magic powder. Another item from the Zelda series. Well, at least a link to the past. I don't know about the other ones. Hmm. You painted a self-portrait. Uh-huh. Why? Is there any character motivation in this game at all? Not really. And we get the magic dust. Yay, I guess. This is a kind of little stupid, pointless little fetch quest that really didn't need to be in the game. I I would have preferred seeing this dungeon in the um, on the trek over here, you know, through the uh, whatever that was. Just use the magic dust or magic powder, whatever, on the picture. Now we can leave. No, you actually have to press the A button on there in order to give it a kiss as well. Yeah, but it, yeah, it should have been on the trek over to this village, you know, the underwater tunnel. That's where I think this dungeon should have been. But, oh well. And then we didn't need any of this side story crap that really amounts to pretty much nothing. Mm-hmm, me too. Gonna do something about it, Will. No, you're just gonna make her feel bad. <sighs> now I feel bad. Oh boy. Then why are you doing it? Hmm. Anything in the world you wanted. I can't remember what that's a reference to. I changed the pronouns, but it's a reference to something. I can't remember what. Eh, whatever. Yet, a lot of the time on this trip, even after you supposedly changed, you still act exactly the same as the day you arrived in Will's house at the start of the game. Not always, mind you, but often enough. Will, you do try and control everything. You're not really one to talk in this situation. Everyone else kind of walks away and you deal with it. Um, sure. Enjoy your paradox. Aww. I guess it's a happy moment? I don't know. Why were you worried? You just met her. And aren't you supposed to be like 28? Or something like that? I don't know, I have a feeling he's like a lot older because he acts significantly more mature than all of the other characters. So I assume he's, you know, kind of the old, or at least if this was a Final Fantasy game, he'd be the old pervy character. In this case, it just kind of seems odd that he's so worried about someone he just met. And no one mentioned anything when I talked to them about Kara disappearing. No one even knew she was missing. She just went to look for stuff. And now all of a sudden they're pissed at her. I don't get it. Hmm. Ooh. <laughs> sure, why not? The floating city. But I've already been to an area that floats on the clouds. Why would I need to go to another floating city? Hmm. So yeah, we gotta talk to Neo when we're ready. Built on rafts? Oh, so it's not really a floating city as in floating in the air. It's floating on the water. That's what a raft is. It's a small construction that floats on water. I think that's the only real use of the term raft. Now, come to think of it. Hmm. All right. Your intuition is good. Has something happened? Not very specific there. Hmm. Oh! Would you look at that? They actually tell you that there's a red jewel. I believe I've gotten all of them. 
Actually, I'm going to go double check and make sure. Actually, no, wait. I have them all. I know I do. And if I don't, then I'll re-record. <laughs> yes, we can. Very hot in the floating city. Not to get heat stroke. Cool. Well, this is the point in the game where I believe we still have access to all of the areas in the... Well, not all of the areas in the game, but from the Angel Village and onward, I think we have access to them to up to the end of the game. We should be able to walk back and forth through all these cities with very little problem. And here we get to Water Mia, which I guess is a really stupid name for a town, even if it basically exists on the water. It was the floating city, now it's the water city. This would not work unless these rafts were, you know, anchored down very tightly. And even so, they would have to be, you know, kind of, you know, uh, anchored to the shore as well. Otherwise, they just float around too much. And there are a lot of people who just get seasick just, you know, standing in a boat. Anyway, we get stuck at Luke's house. Insert Skywalker joke, I guess. Nah, whatever. Anyway, nice. This town... I would say it's confusing. It's probably... Well, it might be the biggest town in the game. It's one of the more annoying towns because everything's not just a straight path. It, it's, you know, zigzags all over the place. Okay. Oh, well, that's... I guess that's not great. Yeah, well, Phrygia... Phrygia, whatever, was very beautiful as well. They had the constant cherry blossoms, which I guess are cool. Well, they are, if you actually, you know, get a chance to look at them. I haven't got a chance to look at them in person. So I don't think I have. Eh. Not in Japan, anyway. You know, I might have seen them in other places, you know, an approximation of it. But, yeah, Frigia had the, uh, the slave trade there as well. Which was their, uh, you know, their backdoor evil gutter thing that they had. And, here in town, apparently, they have games that play with people's lives. Oh boy, the inventor's uh, back to work again, is he? He found something good. Look behind the house. Why do you feel guilty? Oh. Well, apparently, that didn't last all that long. We already just got here, and now, apparently, there's stuff to do. Alright, this here is Luke. Oh, well, that's nice. Yay, there are lily pads around here. If you go behind the house here and go down, well, you can find Kara, or Kara's diary. If we read it, Floating City, again, they can't seem to make up their mind which city this is. Uh-huh. You have a handkerchief? Hmm, go figure. Oh, would you look at that? She's less annoying now. Slightly. Okay, I'm, I complain a bit about Kara's personality. The game I'm working on test runs for right now, there is a character in that game which I really abhor. I just... Nope. I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna save my rage for that game. Save the rage. Save the rage. Okay. Uh, bump and up and Okay, sure. What's saying? Over a lotus leaf? I guess those lily pads are supposed to be lotus leaves in this. Whatever. Your love will notice you. Oh boy. Apparently, uh, Kara has feelings for Will as well. Anyway. That's all for this episode, and next time we will explore the rest of the town. So yeah, I'll see you guys next time.